All right, so welcome back to Aussie Arvos. Today we're fixing more stuff that went wrong over the summer holidays. And that being... Now, before we start, I'm not a mechanic. I'm not good at mechanic stuff whatsoever, but I guarantee by the end of this video, you will have the confidence to do this job yourself. It's really not that hard. As long as you have the right tools and the right information, anyone can do it. So this is my story of a non-mechanic attempting a job he never thought he could do. And I hope it inspires you to give mechanical work a shot on oh. your own car. So, what's the problem? Probably hasn't been a secret. You probably noticed in other videos that, um, my passenger side swivel hub has been leaking ever so slightly. Um, it started with the grease, but on this last trip, I was actually seeing a little bit of diff oil coming down it, so they're definitely due. So, so this is being filmed while I'm waiting to get my center diff lock uh, electronic motor repaired. So while I'm waiting for that to get done, I thought, screw it, we'll tackle the swivel hubs, get this checked off, and then hopefully I can still get out and do some four-wheel driving for the rest of the summer. So I'll show you what I'm working with and how much it all costs. So I'm doing both swivel hubs today. Obviously, if you go do one side, you may as well do the other, because um, you gotta drop the diff oil and all that anyway. So I'm going with the Terrain Tamer bearing kit. So this is kit number SH7WB. This is the major uh, swivel hub kit. So the major kit essentially comes with all the wheel bearings and also has the spindle bushing and the needle uh, roller bearings, which is an upgraded version um, that was on the 105 series. So on the 80 series, it just had a spindle bush, but on the 105, it actually had a spindle bush and um, needle roller bearing in there. So I'll talk a bit about that later. Um, but I'm putting that in, degreaser. I've got old, new three tubs of Molly grease and a tub of lithium-based uh, wheel bearing grease. Um, also got new diff oil there, Penrite 8090. I bought myself a 10 piece um, bearing and seal driver kit only because um, I've seen online that this just makes it a hell of a lot easier to do it than trying to find sockets of the right shape to smash out um, bearings and stuff. So I bought a kit that was like 100 bucks from Super Auto, that was fine. This was 400 bucks from Terrain Tamer himself. Now, a lot of people um, say Terrain Tamer is pretty good um, for their swivel hub kit. Um, People, a lot of people do say use genuine Toyota, you know, you know, axle seals, but I'm just gonna be using the terrain tamer ones today because I was trying to get this all done because right now we're in the middle of summer break and I don't have a car right now. So I'm just trying to, you know, get all this done. So I went down there and bought it off on the shop. And then, yeah, that's basically all we need. I've also got an iPad because I'm not a mechanic. I'm not, I, I'm gonna be, I'm going off the factory service manual and I'm gonna be going off a YouTube tutorial. Um, there was a YouTube, YouTube channel called Second Gear Low, I think it's called, and he did an awesome, awesome video on basically a step-by-step -step process of doing your swivel hubs. Um, so I'm gonna be following along with that video today and basically just going through it. So this isn't a tutorial, this is just sort of highlights of uh, me going through it and uh, how I've done it. Cause this is probably the most major thing I've done on the 80 series or any car for that matter. I've got the 80 just lifted up on the hoist here and now the 80 doesn't really balance that well on a two post hoist. It's especially my car because of all the weight um, on the rear, it's, it's a bit shaky. So what I've actually done is thrown under two big jacks under the front axle just for safety because it's only me here in the shed right now. So um, when I'm playing around, hanging off stuff, getting stuff undone, um, I'm just confident that the car is not gonna tip. So uh, nice and safe, which is always important. Got my wash tray here. So a really important part of I've read of doing all the swivel hubs and everything is making sure you clean everything like really thoroughly. So I've got heat stick greaser, rags, gloves, and we're gonna be cleaning everything properly. So when it all goes back together, it should be all nice, new, um, and yeah, just like a full, full fresh rebuild. So I'm actually really excited to get into it. So pretty much just, yeah, get these wheels off, start building these swivel hubs. It's a weird feeling, pulling apart stuff, not knowing how long it's gonna take you to put it all back together, but it's something you have to do. I think pulling off the tires and dropping the oil is probably the, the hardest part mentally to get into this. But once you get them down, you're committed and you'll get it done. I pretty much got straight into it with my clean hands, going in on the, uh, taking off the flange, the lock nuts, got off the, the actual disc itself. It's uh, definitely not a clean job, but I'm definitely not good at staying clean when working on cars. It gets all over my face and everywhere, but as long as you got some rags with you, you'll be right. My first slowdown came here, trying to get the stub axle off. Hitting all around it, not realizing. You just hit it a couple times on the side and it comes straight out. This will be a recurring theme throughout the video. No grease left in there, is there? That's all just diff oil. 
This whole process, like a lot of mechanical jobs, is all a learning curve. And once you've done it once, you should be able to get it quicker and quicker every time you do it. CV! So much oil and everything clagged up on it. Oh, this is just yuck. And just one thing, I was just getting these tie rods out. I just looked on YouTube and I found an awesome method. Pry bar, run some mud flap. Pry up the tie rod. <clears throat> Hammer on this bit. The minute I turn the camera off, I get it. <laughs> but don't hit the threads, uh, just aim for this bit here. Give it a bit of a prying while you do it and it should come straight on out. Oh, for me? Yeah. Oh, wow, thank you. I better not hold it. Oh, actually. Ha ha! So there's me rubber and me felt, which aren't looking too nice after. Obviously, they've been there for a while. Finally! <laughs> Sorry about that, everyone. We were delayed there by a few hours because I was trying to get this inner axle seal out and I didn't have a seal puller tool, so I was trying to make my own contraptions and it took forever. Um, you can get it with screwdrivers, I'm told, but I just was really, I didn't want to damage um, the actual, the outside seal or anything, so I just wanted to do it properly and anyway, I ended up going down to Super Cheap and I bought a seal puller tool for like 18 bucks, which is all right, and uh, she's all out, so it's the old axle seal out. And now that we got all disassembled, we can start the, uh, the fun game, the cleaning game. So, bunch of paper towel, bunch of degreaser, brake cleaner, and just go through and clean literally everything. And now the reason this job's quite time consuming isn't because it's necessarily hard, it's just because there's a lot of cleaning involved. You know, you're reassembling a lot of major components and everything needs to be spotless. Gaskets need to be removed so new gaskets can go on. You need to really clean everything up properly before you put it all back together. Removing all the old seals and grease is messy, but it's absolutely essential in a job like this. I then hit out the races, cleaned up the CV, hit it with a can of degreaser, and watched all the old grease come pouring out now. All right, so everything's off and everything's been cleaned, so we're pretty much ready to start reassembling everything. I had a look at the CV, that's all looked pretty good, Nick, so. Everything was in fairly good nick. Everything was a bit, you know, dirty and there wasn't a lot of grease left in some parts. Kind of deflated, obviously got in everywhere. Yeah, it's all clean now, so we're gonna start putting it all back together. And uh, yeah, hopefully it goes smoothly, so let's get into it. Ooh, look at that. So as I said, um, using the Terrain Tamer um, Tool Hub Rebuild Kit, we got all the parts in here. So first up, our inner axle seal. Now this is obviously the part that failed and let um, diff oil uh, into the knuckles. So these can obviously wear out um, and you can also wear out the, on your CV, you can actually wear out where the CV rubs against that inner axle seal. So you wanna check and feel for a groove. If you have a groove, you should either try and push the inner axle seal in further or probably replace your CV. And as we hit it in, we'll notice stop once that surface is flush. And I'm super glad I bought this driver and seal tool because it just makes it so much easier hitting races in, hitting in seals. Yes, you could use sockets or whatever, but having the actual correct sizes, like having the race guys sit straight onto the tool and then hammer it in straight and proper makes it so much easier. And I highly recommend having a seal driver tool before you attempt this job. Now you've probably noticed I've been pretty much going off the iPad the entire time and that's because I found the visual aid being the most useful to pre-assembly everything. There's usually specific orders of how things are put together or certain tricks to get certain items on, for example that split ring. So using the iPad made it a hell of a lot easier. Next was to pack the wheel bearings using the Penrite Molly grease and then I got stuck straight into reassembling that knuckle. Sweet. And of course, it's very important to make sure everything is torqued to the correct specification as stated in the factory service manual. I then packed the CV joint with molly grease and then put the axle back in the car. Once the CV was back in, it was then time to fill the knuckle with molly grease. They say to do about two thirds full inside the knuckle of grease because you can over grease these things. And now this was probably the hardest part of the entire rebuild and this was removing the spindle bush from the stub axle. 
You can see me trying to fiddle around, trying to get my brass drift on some ledge, just a little bit of meat, just yet to hit it out, but it was worn down that much that I couldn't even get it on it at all. All right, welcome to another day in the shed. Now, I feel like on these projects, there's always like one thing that costs you like four hours and it takes forever. Uh, anyway, that was last night's mission. Um, the brass spindle bush um, on the spindle was a nightmare to get out. Mine had worn down to the point where usually you can sort of such throw a socket in there or something to get on the ledge of it and knock it out, but mine had worn down to the point where it was the same diameter as the rest of it, so there was no way to properly like hit it out with a drift. Um, I would have needed like one of those um, pullers that can expand out from the inside and kind of pull it out. But anyway, I didn't have that, so literally had to hack it uh, to the point where I can get it out. But now you can see it's free. So we can put our new upgraded, so this is actually off a, off a 105 series, spindle bush and needle roll bearings. So it's still, still a brass bushing, but it's just like half the size. And now it's got a needle roll bearing in there as well. So I'm not sure why they moved to this in the 105 series, but it's what terrain tamer sells in the kits. It's what everyone seems to go to. Um, people say the old, just bigger, Brass bushing is more bushproof, obviously, you know, no moving, no moving parts, but I don't know, I'm just doing the upgrade because everyone seems to do it and they're a lot easier to change um, once they've been upgraded apparently. So yeah, go ahead, get the spindle on, get moving again, get this thing done. So let's get onto it. It's funny how much you learn doing this stuff yourself, especially the first time. You realize how much you use all your senses, like your ears when you're hitting in all these races. You notice the sound difference when you get to the bottom. Little things like that you'll pick up and you'll just learn for life. Beginning to put the whole knuckle back together was really satisfying. It, it might seem really daunting and a lot of parts, but if you do it step by step, it really isn't too bad. And you begin to get a real appreciation for how the car works, how it goes together, and how not to treat it when going forward driving. I also highly recommend having some brass drifts around of all different shapes because it really does help getting out those races and because they're brass, it stops us from accidentally damaging yes. internals and components. And I won't lie, it took a long time for me to get the first side done. Like I spent ages here just trying to get races in straight. I kept hitting them in, I kept hitting them on the angles, I had to stop, take it out, redo. It's a massive sort of learning curve doing it all the first time. You sort of, once you know it and once you learn it, you can do it, but it's just sort of getting your head around how to do it properly um, takes a little bit. But it is rewarding once you start hitting it in and it all goes in straight and it all seems to click and work together. Next I grease the wheel bearings using the lithium grease I bought. I drop them in and then put the seal on top. I then grease the hub and packed my other wheel bearing. I then put the brake disc hub back on, added the thrush washer and adjusting nut and set the wheel bearing preload. and then the lock washer and the lock nut, and we were pretty much there. Oh, that's a good feeling to have that on. Once I had the drive flange on, I could see the home stretch. We had nearly finished repairing the leaking tool hub on the 80 series. Oh, nearly there. I threw the brakes back on, tightened it up, and hopefully this won't leak no more. Well, that is one side done. It was a bloody good feeling having this side back together because it gave me the confidence to smash out the other side, which I ended up doing in half the time. I definitely think if you have the time, working on your car can be really rewarding. You learn skills that you didn't have before, you gain confidence that you didn't have before, you save heaps of money as well, which is probably the, the biggest part of it. 
it's life skills that you always have and that you might need one time, especially if you want to you know, go away touring or go for all driving and do all this stuff far from home. Having these basic skills and basic knowledge of how your car operates and works and having the confidence to potentially repair things on the side of the road is a really cool thing to have. Now, obviously you need things like tools and a workshop, but I'm fortunate enough to have things, you know, like the hoist, to have a workshop full of tools and to have knowledgeable people around me that know what they're doing and if I do get in a bind, they can always usually save my ass and get me out of it. But if you are just by yourself and you don't have anyone, I'd recommend just starting with small projects and just gaining your confidence up slowly. Living in today's age with the internet and you know forums, there's a huge community of people online that can help you out. Without the YouTube tutorial from Second Yellow, I wouldn't have felt comfortable to do these swivel hubs on myself. I just wouldn't have like and that was a similar story with when I did the timing belt on the 80 series. You know, I followed a YouTube video to do that. It's we have it all inside of ourselves. We have it within ourselves to do great things. It just comes down to a little bit of confidence and, you know, believe in yourself and you can do it and you can achieve great things. Oh, all right. That's both swivel hubs, knuckles reassembled. Um, so now I'm gonna throw the tires on, lower it off the hoist, get down to ground level and then fill it up with diff fluid and then we should be away. <laughs> Handbrake. And for the diff oil, Camera 8090 Mineral. Uh, I'm running this in tran the transmission and the gearbox, um, and I've been told it's pretty good stuff. The internet seems to think it's pretty good stuff as well. So, um, yeah, using this uh, in the front diff. That's it guys, that's how you do a full swivel hub rebuild on your 80 or 105 oh. Second Gear Low, absolute legend. I um, used his uh, video the entire time and um, yeah, really good. So Second Gear Low, check him out. He did an absolute, like, the best how-to tutorial I've seen for like automotive stuff. So yeah, awesome job. Thanks for helping me. <laughs> I've now finally done the swivel hubs on the 80 series. Probably my biggest, um, my biggest mechanical thing on any car, so um, yeah, stoked to have done it. And uh, yeah, it really wasn't that hard. As long as you have like a good tutorial or someone teaching you how to do it, um, it's pretty straightforward, so yeah.